Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of Be Hooked. Today's episode, we're gonna do things a little bit different. We're gonna work on a knit project instead of a crochet one. So if you're just learning how to knit, this is going to be a great project for you, or if you're a beginner or an advanced beginner, this is definitely something that you can create. This is a simple project where we're going to knit a front and a back in the same way. We're gonna seam up the sides and the shoulders, and we're gonna have this gorgeous top to show for it. So you can find the written instructions for this pattern over on my website. You can find that linked in the video description below or up in the top corner of your screen. That'll give you, again, your full supplies list, more photos, and it will have the written instructions step-by-step -step on what you're supposed to do. Now on the topic of those supplies, we're gonna be working with It's a Wrap Rainbow Yarn from Red Heart. This is a brand new yarn to their line, and I was really excited to try it, but even more excited to see and feel how it knits up. I think you're really going to love it. So I wanna break this tutorial down into four different sections. We're gonna have a look at three different stitch patterns that are incorporated into the top. Those are gonna be the first three segments. And then we'll have a look at how to seam everything together to wrap it up. And we'll have a gorgeous top to show for all of our efforts. So first up, let's see how to cast on and work that ribbing pattern at the very bottom of our top. After you've had a look at those written instructions, you figured out which size you're going to work. You wanna focus in on that cast on number. Since this pattern is available in six different sizes, you'll definitely want to refer to that to get this specific cast on number. And once again, you can find the written instructions linked in the video description above. I'll also put a link right here on your screen so you have easy access to that. Now I'm going to be working on a very small scale portion of this top. That way we can see it here comfortably on the screen. So I'm going to cast on 24. However, your number is gonna be much larger than that. So I like to work the long tail cast on, and as the name implies, you wanna get yourself a long tail. So the first thing I like to do is just lay the working yarn over my needle, and then pinch these two fingers together, gather it up, and kind of spread them out, and I hold on to this because I opt to not do a slip knot. You can do that, but you don't have to. So for the long tail cast on, you'll pull your thumb over just forward so you can see this bottom strand. You'll work your needle under that and then swing back around, catch the loop on your finger and then release the thumb loop over the tip of the needle and tighten things up and you have two stitches cast on. After you have all of your stitches cast on, we're just going to turn our work over and set ourselves up to knit our first row. Now we're gonna start with a ribbing pattern and this is probably going to be the worst row out of all because we're working in the cast on stitches. Things always tend to be a little less comfortable when we're on our first couple of rows, but it does get much easier. So the first thing we'll do is find our first stitch we want to knit. So we'll insert our needle knitwise Wrap the yarn, I'm going to knit the first stitch. And then since the that first stitch is always a little loose, just grab your tail and pull on it and it'll tighten it up. And then we're gonna knit the next stitch as well. So we're working on a two by two rib, so we're gonna knit two and purl two. Now to purl the stitches, you wanna make sure you pull that working yarn to the front, insert your needle purlwise, so back to front, Wrap the yarn and purl it off. Do that one more time. And that starts the repeat. We'll knit two, so pull the working yarn to the back. Knit your next two stitches. And 
and then purl to. So pull it to the front. And we simply need to repeat that until we get to the end of our row. So when you make it to the end of your row, your last two stitches should be purls. Now one last thing I like to do before I flip things over is do a little bit of a self check. Now you may actually want to do this as you go along since I've got just a small snippet of the pattern here. It's a little easier to show you now. But rec I recommend that you have a look at your stitches, you read your knitting as you go to make sure that you're not messing up the ribbing pattern. It's really easy to get into a groove and maybe knit three and then purl one. I mean, anything can happen. So check your work as you go. When you're looking at your work like this, whenever you see these little bumps, those are purls. So I'll just kind of zero in on those bumps. I'll see that these first two don't have them and these do, so those are purls, and then two knits, two purls, two knits, two purls, two knits, two purls. So I am all good to go, my pattern is consistent, and I'm ready to start on that next row. However, we've already seen the repeat for this pattern, so we'll just flip our work, continue to work the knit two, purl two, repeat. Now it's gonna be a little bit easier this row, because we have a little bit more to work with. We'll knit two. And purl two. So this repeat is rather short. We don't have to work the knit two, purl two ribbing for very long. So you want to refer to your written instructions to get the specific measurement and then when you reach the end of that ribbing pattern or when it measures the length that's indicated in your instructions, then we'll move on to the next stitch pattern, the stockinette stitch. All right, so once you've worked up the length of your ribbing, the first thing you wanna do before we move on to the stockinette pattern is make sure that we're working on the right side of the work. Now this is a minor detail if you start on the front or the back, the difference is so small that you may not even be able to see it here. If you're familiar with working the two by two rib, you want to orient yourself so the first row of our stockinette stitch is on the right side. Now I wanna point it out for you here. The two by two rib always looks a little bit wonky before we block it and when it's sitting on the needle like this, but focus your attention on the bottom edge, the cast on edge. See how it looks on one side and then flip it over and see how it looks on the other side. So what I did was I worked my knit two, purl two, that ribbing pattern, so that when I flip my work, I'm looking at the right side or this cleaner edge. Now I'll start my stockinette pattern first. And before we saw the, the ribbing pattern was a two stitch repeat, while the stockinette stitch is a two row repeat. It's very simple. The first row of the stockinette stitch when you're knitting in the flat is all knits. So we're gonna knit every single one of our stitches. Now when you've made it to the end of the first row of your stockinette stitch pattern, we'll just simply turn our work and we're set up to work row number two. So row number two of the stockinette stitch pattern is all purls. So I like to stick my needle in underneath the working yarn, coming back to front. That way I have my working yarn on the right side since remember we have to have it at the front when we purl. So it looks like this. This first stitch is always just a little bit difficult. We'll purl that stitch and then it gets much easier from there. So in row number two, we're gonna purl every stitch. So once you're finished with the knit row and then the purl row, you're just gonna repeat that over and over until your work measures the length that's given for the size that you're working on. Another thing I wanna to bring to your attention is the change in color. 
Now for all of the sizes, you can't work a top with just one ball of yarn. So what I did for mine is I played with the color variations a little bit so that I could cycle through all of the colors that were for my given colorway. So the photos that you saw at the beginning here of the video and what you see on the website, that is the whisper colorway and it kind of goes from purple and green to green and gray and then gray and pink and then a couple different shades of pink. So there was a lot of colors to cycle through and I wanted to reach that full gradient from when I started my cast on edge there with like the, the green and the purple colorway all the way to the top edge where I'll bind off for the shoulders. I wanted that to reach the very last color. So what I did was honestly, it was a lot of guesswork and I just took out sections after I reached certain points. Now I was able to find the pattern within that specific colorway so that basically each color transition happened for a certain measure, a certain length. Now you may be working on one of the different colorways. Maybe it has fewer variations. Maybe you're working on just the regular it's a wrap where it's a little bit more striped and you probably won't have to deal with any of this. But just know that you can play with color a little bit here. You don't have to just let it cycle through half of your skein because let's say you like the color that's on the end of the ball and you want to get to that point. Well, all you have to do is roll up a ball. You can save that yarn for later and just take your best guess at how, how much to remove and continue knitting from there. Now, once again, since I'm working on just a micro version of the pattern, you'll want to make sure that you check the written instructions so you get that specific length for the size that you're working on. When we meet back up, we'll have a look at how to alter the stitch pattern just slightly for those armholes and we'll be well on our way to finishing our first panel. After you've worked that stockinette stitch pattern over and over and your top measures, the proper length is indicated in the instruction for the size that you're making. The next little repeat is for the armhole and it's mostly the same as the stockinette. We're just going to do something very different on either side. That way we can kind of combat this rolling effect that we get. We'll start the stitch pattern repeat on the wrong side. So I'll just go ahead and flip it over so I can see the wrong side of my top. And this wrong side row is the first and only one that's different from what we're used to with that stockinette stitch pattern. So rather than purling all stitches like we normally would, we're going to knit some at the very beginning and the very end. And again, that certain number is going to, going to depend on the size that you're making. So for my little swatch here, I'm going to knit three. Your number is gonna be very different from that. So I'll knit three, that's gonna be my little border. Then I'll set myself up to purl. So pull the yarn in the front and purl until I get to the last three or purl until you get the last number that you're supposed to knit. And once I've reached those last three stitches, I'll pull the yarn in back so I can knit the last three. So what this does is it creates a garter stitch on the side. So I'll have three garter stitches on either side for the armhole. So when I flip it over, row number two is gonna be worked the same as we're used to. So row number two of the armhole repeat is to knit all stitches, including those first and last ones. It'll work out so you still have a garter stitch ridge and in the middle you'll still have that stockinette pattern. So what you'll need to do to work up this section of your top is again refer to your written instructions so you can see how long you're supposed to make this repeat. It's going to be different depending on the size that you're making. The next thing we'll cover is how to do 
the the last little bit of the top so basically what we see up at the shoulders and then we'll cast off so here i have my tiny little top here i've got a few stitches or a few rows rather of the armhole that repeat and here you can see how the garter stitch looks a little different on the edge and you'll also notice that it's not wanting to curl like it is down here for the stockinette that's the purpose of adding that little detail and the last thing we want to do is work on the garter stitch repeat and this is going to be seen right up right up at the shoulder seams so again that repeat is going to start on the wrong side and I think you're really going to love this because it's super simple. If you're brand new to the garter stitch, all we do is knit every stitch for every single row. So on the wrong side, we're going to knit every stitch and on the right side, we're going to knit every stitch. And again, we'll refer to the written instructions so that we can find the exact length that we're supposed to add here with this garter stitch repeat. And you'll just find that based on the size that you're creating. After you've worked that garter stitch repeat a few times, then you'll really start to see that nice bumpy texture. And once you've worked the repeat until the pattern indicates, we're ready to bind off. We're just going to do a simple bind off here. We want to make sure we're looking at the right side of the work. We're going to knit our stitches. So go ahead and knit the first two. That'll get you set up. Then we're going to pass the first stitch over the second. And this really is a little bit fiddly if you're unfamiliar with binds off, bind offs. So just slide your needle underneath that stitch and just very easily and slowly pass it over. So then the next thing we'll do is knit the next stitch. Then pass over that first one. And we'll just continue that until we have only one more stitch on our needle. And when you've passed that last stitch over, you can go ahead and trim a tail. After you have one panel of your top completely knit, the first thing you'll want to do is go ahead and wet block it. So we can see that it's, it's wanting to curl a little bit here on the sides. Maybe the stitches are a little bit bumpy or wobbly down here with the ribbing. You can correct a lot of that with wet blocking. So get yourself a blocking board, a athletic floor tile, yoga mat, whatever you have will work, and some straight pins, and you'll stretch it out a little bit. Again, you can refer to the written instructions to get the precise measurements for each size. You'll want to block it to that length. So stretch it out, pin it down, and then saturate it with water. Allow that to dry, and while that's drying, go ahead and knit up your back panel, it's gonna be worked in the exact same way. When we pick up the last thing we have to do is seam up the sides from here to here, and then two little sections up at the top for the shoulders. Now here I have both sides of my tiny little top complete. And although I did mention that you should wet block each of your panels, your front and your back panel, before you do the seaming step, I'm illustrating here why that's a good idea. See how it's kind of curly and you really can't see some of the sides very evenly. It also makes it a little more difficult to seam it together. So wet block your project before you get started. And then we're gonna focus our attention down on the bottom edge here with the ribbing. <clears throat> You'll go ahead and take a darning needle. Now you can use your tails and if you left a long enough tail, I would recommend you do that or just grab yourself a scrap piece of yarn. And then we want to focus our attention and sort of do like a mattress stitch where we're going back and forth. And then when we pull it tight, it's pretty much gonna zip up 
and it'll be nice and closed and have a, a minimally visible seam. So focus your attention here on the farthest row that's right on the side. We'll first attach the two pieces together and we'll do that just by running under that bottom most stitch there with your darning needle and then catching that same one here on your other side. Now from here, the idea is to go up, then over, up, then over, up, then over, up and over. And we'll keep doing that until we get all the way to the top. Now the tricky part here is knowing exactly where to put your needle. So find that next row up. And if you look in between the V's or actually just kind of poke your needle in under those V's, then you'll find the bar that sort of bridges those two together. So that's the V. Stick your needle in between it and you'll find that little bar. Now I'll find that next row up here on the other side. Find that bar and stick my needle in there. Find the stitch where your yarn is coming from right now. You'll go up one row, catch that little bar. And then we'll go over. So find out where it's where we left off here, that last bar, and go up one row, catch the bar. Now you're kind of seeing the trend. This is what we're going to do back and forth all the way until we get to the armhole seam, or basically where we transitioned to those garter stitches. So go ahead and work your seam all the way up to that point. All right, so now here's the fun part. When you have all of that woven and stitched back and forth, if you haven't done this already, we'll go ahead and like just hold this down, pull on this working strand there, and it'll close everything up. You kind of have to pull a little tight. Now don't pull it out the bottom side. That would not be good. But then we have our seam. So what we'll need to do is fold this in half now and work that same thing up to the other side. Then the last part we need to do is seam up a little section for each of the shoulders. And when you're ready to seam the shoulders, go ahead and refer to the written instructions so you know how far to sew in. You can either measure or you can just count the stitches if you find that that's a little easier. I'm using the tail from one of my end pieces and the seaming technique is pretty much the same, only it's maybe a little easier because it looks like we have some visible stitches to work into. So the first thing I'll need to do is join the two sides together. And again, you can kind of leave this a little loose and then you can pull it tight. You'll go under the next stitch and then you'll go across. Then go up one stitch. And across, then up one. Now this is just one seaming technique too. If you have a certain technique that you like, then by all means, do whatever you're most comfortable with. For me, I find that this is the most difficult part and I'd like to experiment a little bit and see what works, what looks best. This is one of those techniques that I feel looks pretty good right now. Is it perfect? Nope, it's definitely not perfect, but it does get the job done. Now, once you've sewn in as far as you need to, again, we can just pull on this strand. That'll tighten it up. And the last thing we'll need to do is just weave in all of our ends. Now, I do recommend that you weave them in on the wrong side of the work. And to demonstrate that briefly, this is my tail. I just sewed into place, I'll work it down just so I can get it away from that opening because that really is going to be exposed. That'll be the part that's showing around our neck. Go into that little ridge there. And then just find you a nice row of stitches. This garter stitch row works really well and just kind of circle your needle around so you're working around those stitches helps to hide it a little bit better. 
And once you get that worked around that one row, then I'll jump down to the next one. And then just do the same thing, kind of weave it around these stitches. Now, of course, you'll just want to weave in the rest of your ends. Thank you so much for your time and attention today. I really appreciate you. And I would love to see your tops that you're working on. There's so many different colorways available in It's a Wrap yarn and It's a Wrap rainbow. And I'd love to see this top worked up in some of those colorways. So you can do so by finding me on Instagram at BeHooked and use the hashtag BeHooked, B-H-O-O-K-E-D. Now, big thanks to my sponsor, Red Heart, for allowing me to bring this tutorial to you today. I hope you've enjoyed this project and learning how to knit or advancing some of those knitting skills that you already have. That's all for today, guys. I'll see you soon.